Peter Coffin has been on the internet for a long time. While they started off making comedy sketches in the mid 2010s, Our self -worth is not contingent on how many women we've laid. Peter's personal politics slowly drifted leftward, and with it, so did his YouTube channel. They posted their first video essay way back in 2016 in support of Bernie Sanders, joining the burgeoning wave of voices on the online left. While other channels were flashy and provocative, Peter Coffin was simpler, easily digestible and to the point. Kind of cringy at times, but easy to watch. Four years ago, they breathed life into this channel by giving me a shout out that gave me my first views. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't still be writing essays and editing videos today. In a lot of ways, I looked up to them. That was the kind of channel I wanted. I wanted to be as educated, well-read, and informed as they were. Peter heavily critiqued the online attention economy and the role YouTubers played in the system. His first book, 2018's Custom Reality and You, built on the idea that late capitalism had ushered a world where people live in virtual bubbles, mediated by images and social media that no longer reflect reality. Custom realities that have weakened our ability to empathize with each other and more importantly, organize with each other to fight for a better future. 2018 was also one of his most successful years as a content creator, and it was great to see a channel that promoted radical politics and radical understanding and empathy for others do so well. But a lot has changed since 2018. Coffin was by no means someone new to drama. There was the fake girlfriend saga where someone very publicly catfished them into believing they had an Asian girlfriend. They also had some unsavory tweets in the past, but by and large, they were able to weather the storm each time. Then the AOC Among Us stream happened. Back in the 2020 election, as part of the Democratic campaign, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez joined a few streamers to play Among Us. What seemed like a harmless stream meant to get out the vote was criticized endlessly by Peter. According to them, figures like Hasanabi and H Bomber Guy in streaming with AOC who were helping the establishment co-opt radical politics. Hasanabi, who was once the guy who got banned for saying, Fuck it, I'm saying it. America deserved the world historical event that happened in 2001 was now playing a part of Team Biden, the return to normalcy candidate. The danger, as Peter argued, was that in the future, these content creators would have to self-censor and watch what they say if they still wanted to be invited to events like this in the future. To set themselves apart from the captured opposition, Peter began to unfollow and block almost all the creators they had come up with. This is when I personally chose to mute them because his feed was just a cesspool of negativity. It wasn't helped by the fact that Peter kind of seemed hurt that they weren't invited to the stream. Or at least they implied that they weren't invited in those spaces because they spoke truth to power as opposed to those other creators and the man was trying to keep them away from the mainstream. We could speculate what went on in his personal life that led to such a downturn. After spending over a decade online, his personal trials are all online for everyone to see. But this isn't a drama channel. This isn't the channel you go to for voyeurism. Point is, this once beloved figure started going fringe. They suddenly started accusing people associated with the streaming service Nebula of the same thing they had thrown at Hasanabi and H-Bomb. Because apparently there's one guy on the Nebula board who's also a part of the advisory board for the US Agency of International Development, which Peter couldn't stop tweeting about. About. The implication here clearly being that being part of Nebula meant you were being controlled by the US government in some way. So not only had Peter turned on all the first wave creators they had come up with, but they were now isolating themselves from the next generation of up and comers and basically all educational content creators. And the frustrating thing about the situation is that they weren't wrong in the technical sense. Peter's critique of what we'll call online leftism is relevant. Independent creators collaborating with members of the Democratic Party is part of how these big institutions exert their power over culture. When institutions create an in-group of creators and brands that are safe to work with, they necessarily create an out-group. And what decides whether you get to be in the club or not is whether you tend to follow the party line. The AOC stream brought a lot of eyes to these creators, and from a creator perspective, if taking a certain political stance means threatening your access to these institutional spaces, power, and visibility, 
then you bet your ass you're gonna think twice before taking a potentially controversial political stance. The same applies to Nebula, which is a lot less soft power like the AOC stream, and much more hard considering that it's a platform that can literally choose to platform or deplatform you. If the board of Nebula really is made up of these US government agents, then they'll reflect the interests of the US government and who or who not to platform. Again, meaning that creators have to self-censor to ensure that they remain within the means of acceptability for the powers that be. This is all Manufacturing Consent 101. And it's why Peter took such a harsh stance against it. To him, the online left he had come up with had sold out. But there was a big, critical piece missing in Peter's argument, namely, nuance. Hasanabi and H-Bomb hadn't signed up to be content creators for the Democratic Party. They participated in a one-off event organized by a member of the party who's a Democratic Socialist. I don't agree with all of AOC's politics, but these guys weren't selling their soul to the party. When it comes to Nebula, it seems like there's a more substantive critique here, but the only piece of evidence Coffin has is that one guy on the board serves on US aid. Does that automatically mean that every video put out on the platform has to be rubber stamped by the US Ministry of Truth? No! Get the fuck out of here! And apparently I just can't read because that person isn't even on the board of Nebula, they're on the board of Curiosity Stream, which According to Wikipedia, Curiosity Stream is a minority holder. So, one guy of a company that is a minority holder of another company is enough to get you associated as a US aid associated creator, according to Peter Coffin. Peter's understanding of elite capture is way too one dimensional because even if the online left wanted to sell out, it's not like they could. They already had! These online figures, myself included, aren't revolutionary leftists in the spirit of Che Guevara. We're fucking content creators, and we're very good lapdogs for the elite because of one very important word, ad revenue. You could say every creator on this platform serves the interest of capital because we're all beholden to the almighty dollar. And fuck, I'm sure Peter has said this before. I have no proof, but it's the kind of thing he'd say, and that again, isn't technically wrong. We're all sellouts because we're chasing the dollar on this website owned by a major tech corporation that very visibly constricts thought. If you step out of line like Hasanabi, you will get banned. But that suddenly doesn't mean there isn't any merit to writing or creating political content on Twitch or YouTube. That doesn't mean there isn't merit to taking some form of institutional support and visibility when appropriate, even from figures associated with the US government. To say otherwise is to lack any nuance. And I think creators like Hasanabi and H-Bomb have done a remarkable job at staying consistent over the years despite their rise to more mainstream success. With that said, I sympathize with Peter here because it's really easy to be cynical about some of the shit that gets posted online. There are a lot of creators out there that post content that's literally just bootlicking US foreign policy, even from supposed anarchists. I'm not gonna name names here, but if the shoe fits, you know who I'm talking about. Even the most well-known leftist creators on the platform are often spicy liberals at best. When you look at the world around you and how impotent the messaging of the most visible leftists can be, it can make you angry. I get it. There's something to the argument that only the less subversive political content gets floated to the top. But the point remains that there's nothing revolutionary in what we're doing here for the establishment to co-opt. The online left had sold out from the beginning. And it's okay to accept that that's all this is. And in Peter's case, he was losing visibility not because he was subversive, he was just being an asshole. And we saw this with his association with Caleb Maupin, who honestly deserves a video of his own. But originally, Maupin was just some guy with bad politics that Peter slowly started to adopt. It wasn't until Maupin's organization, the Center for Political Innovation, was accused of being a Colt and Maupin the leader of it, that we'd see just how far Peter had fallen. Their response to the allegations was basically a shrug and an oh well. As a result, Coffin's relevance just evaporated. Today, their channel is a wasteland. Attention is the currency in the marketplace of ideas. That used to be Peter's unofficial catchphrase, but if attention really is currency, then Peter's flat broke. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below.